If you're on your homestead, your small farm, whatever, if you're thinking about getting goats and you want to know what are the bare necessities, what do I need to milk a goat successfully? Well, I've got a list. I'm going to share that with you guys. I want to make a sign for my milk room that says, we believe in participation trophies here. Everybody gets a peanut. Hey guys, I'm Kaylin and this is Finkel. Welcome back to Fable Hill Farm. We are out here in my milk room, out in my goat barn on this very, very warm summer evening. I'm doing my evening milking here in a few minutes and I thought I would show you guys and talk to you guys about the 10 must have things that you absolutely have to have if you wanna milk a goat at home. So Finkel is gonna be our model here for the item number one, numero uno must have, which is a milk stand. You can see that I have this wooden stand here that my husband built. You can also have a metal stand. The stand is waist high here instead of being down where I have to, you know, bend down or sit on a stool to milk. I do have a metal stand. I do take it to shows. It's portable. It's great for that, but I absolutely hate to bend down. Finkel is not actually in milk. She is pregnant and due in September. You can see she does have a little developing udder there and she is being stand trained. So she's currently learning to, whoo, that one off stand there to come on the stand to get a little snack, to get her udder touched, have her ligaments felt. And she's not loving it, but she'll get used to it. You are a dairy goat, Finkel, so you're gonna be up here a lot in your life. Best of all, she gets a peanut. And then she's happy, and then she doesn't wanna leave. Goodbye, sayonara. Sunny, you're up. Come on, son. Sunny is a first freshener. We freshened May 7th, so she's only had kids one time. I guess a buck and a doe, good girl. I'll get her, she's like, where's my bowl? I don't have any green. Item number one, a milk stand, like I said. Item number two, you need to have some type of cleaning, disinfecting protocol for milking, milk handling, for hand washing, whether you wear gloves, whatever the case may be, you need to know how to safely handle milk and you need to make sure that you're cleaning udders, disinfecting udders before and after milk. These are the things that I use and there are other things and there are other ways to do it. There's lots of ways to skin a cat, definitely do your own research, but these are the things I use. One, Orange Dawn. This is the antibacterial Dawn. It has, um, the same ingredient as chlorhexidine, like for surgical scrub. Uh, this is the soap that I use. This is what I wash udders with, along with this. Uh, this is essentially, this is called Pro Shield. This is an essential oil blend. It's like a thieves oil blend from Young Living is what I would use uh, preferably. I don't have any right now, so I'm using this, but that is a essential oil. You don't have to have that. That's something that I use personally, but the soap to me is a must have. I also keep bleach out here. And every time that I use my milk machine, which I'm not gonna use tonight, you don't have to have a milk machine to milk. So I'm gonna hand milk and show you guys the things you need for hand milking, but I do clean my milk machine after every use with both that Orange Dawn dish soap, hot soapy water, bleach, and then clean water, of course, to rinse through. After I am done washing the udder, after I'm done milking, I go ahead and I spray the teats with this, which is Fight Back. This is a pretty widely used product in the dairy industry. It is a teat disinfectant for the control of mastitis. So you're preventing bad bacteria from going up into that teat right after you milk and that orifice is open. Some people will also use a teat dip or instead of we'll use a teat dip. This is a teat dip cup with uh, betadine in it. And that's another thing that you can use as well. Some people will um, dip 
the teat at some point in the beginning of the milking process before they actually start milking and then dip the teat afterwards or dip the teat then spray the teat. So again, lots of ways to skin a cat, but you've got to have something. You have to know how to safely handle milk, how to clean things, how to clean the udder, to clean the teats and to keep them clean and to keep bad bacteria out. You're also going to need to have stainless steel milk buckets. And across the board, when you're talking about, you know, dairy and milk equipment, it should be stainless steel. Stainless steel can go in the dishwasher. It is the most sanitary way to handle milk. So glass or stainless steel. So I've got two different sizes of milk buckets. I've got this one, which is, I believe a two quart bucket. And then this one, which is a one quart bucket. Now I have Nigerian dwarf goats, which are the smallest breed of dairy goat. They're a miniature dairy goat. And the one quart bucket is the perfect size to put underneath them for hand milking, which I'm about to show you. The next thing that you're gonna need to have is rags or wipes or disinfectant wipes. I'm about to show you guys how I clean the udder and wipe them all down before I milk. So that way I know I'm starting with a clean surface that's free of hair, that's free of poop, that's free of straw and other debris. So I have a ton of rags that are designated milking rags and they're you know one time use each joke gets a rag sometimes two and i go ahead and put them in a dry bag and have that hanging off of my milk stand and then i take those in and i wash them a couple times a week which is why i have a lot because you know depending on how many goats you have depending on how many times a day you milk you're going to go through a lot of rags have a lot of rags i use like dollar store washcloths or old washcloths another thing that you're going to need to have is hot water now i don't have any water out in my barn which is unfortunate but if you've seen previous videos this is actually not a barn it was originally a very old very rundown shed that we converted into a functional goat barn it doesn't have a sink yet. It doesn't have running water out here except for the outdoor frost-free spigot. So I have to haul hot water from my garage, which really isn't that big of a deal, in a bucket out to the barn. My barn cat just came through the window if you heard that noise. So I've got this little bucket of hot water because again, I'm hand milking tonight, so I don't need as much water as I would need if I was gonna be cleaning my milk machine out later. You're also going to need jars to put your milk in or some type of storage container for milk that's going to be easy to clean and sanitize. I use these half gallon glass mason jars. That is what my milk machine also uses currently. And that's how I store my milk in the fridge. I have different lids for like being able to just flip and you know pour milk out of like a spout, which makes it way easier than just pouring out of a mason jar, but you're gonna need jars. And if you have more than one or two goats, trust me, you're gonna need a lot of jars because no matter what, you're gonna have milk and it seems like there's never enough jars. One's always gonna break or get left in the freezer when you're trying to chill your milk. So get some jars. Another thing that you're gonna have to have to really uh, manage your dairy goats well is gonna be some type of like butter cream or lotion or multiple options for different things like to prevent mastitis if dealing with a congested udder if you're trying to dry a dough up if you have a staff on the udder there are different times that you're going to need to have something to put on that udder to help to take care of that skin so bag balm I don't have any right now to show you but that's something that is you know very widely used been around forever bag balm is a great product is one thing I have here this olive avocado oil based uh, lotion that I actually just made today that also has lavender essential oil and tea tree essential oil in it and vitamin E as well as emu oil and this is something that I can put on an udder if I think a doe might have a little congestion in her udder or maybe is potentially developing mastitis or seems to have inflammation in the mammary tissue then this is something I can massage into the udder to help with that so you should definitely have something like that on hand so that again you can you know identify an issue when it's in the beginning stages and treat it successfully instead of it becoming a more serious issue like a really serious case of mastitis another thing that you're you're going to need to have is a way to chill your milk if you're drinking your milk if you want to have good tasting milk goat's milk in particular you need to get that milk cooled down ideally that would mean that all of us would have a designated 
freezer or fridge, you know, in our milk room where we could just throw that milk in right away and cool it down. That's in a perfect world. Most people don't have that. I don't have that. But just bearing that in mind, you want to have space either in a fridge in the garage, in a freezer that you can throw that milk in and cool it down as fast as possible. If the only fridge that you have is the refrigerator in your house, of course, that's going to work. You're going to make do with what you have. But just bear in mind when you have a fridge that's in your house, it's being opened a lot more than say like a garage fridge. So it's going to be harder to maintain a more consistent cool temperature. Another thing that you need to have if you're going to be milking your own goats is a filter, a milk filter, a way to filter your milk. And ideally you are going to be filtering that milk as soon as possible. For me personally, I chill the milk right away and then I leave it in the fridge for about, you know, 25, 30 minutes in the freezer, I should say. And then I go ahead and I filter that milk even though it's going through my milk machine, even though I have a whole sanitation process that I follow with that as far as, you know, cleaning the udder ahead of time, stripping out the teat, cleaning my milk equipment after each use, I am still making sure that I am then filtering the milk before I actually put it in a jar, put a pour spout on that bottle and say, hey, this milk is safe for human consumption. The last thing that you are going to need that you absolutely have to have if you wanna have a dairy goat at home is going to be feed. You need to think of milk of a dairy animal as food in, milk out. If you are not feeding your dairy goat, you're not going to get a lot of milk. So you need to prepare, be prepared to feed that animal. Now there are people who do grain free on their dairy goats that is not a common practice and that is not something that I personally have experience with so I cannot speak to managing dairy goats without grain. I feed grain, I also feed alfalfa pellets which are legume, black oil sunflower seeds, you know other things like kelp and yeast and different minerals, zinc, whatever, all the things. But I feed grain to my goats and yes, my German dwarfs are miniature goats and their their overall their feed input is lower than like standard size breeds like Nubians or Alpines or Toggenbergs or Little Manchas. Whatever the case may be, there's lots of different kinds of goats. Feed requirements are going to be higher in larger goats. Nigerian dwarfs are prized for the fact that they're small and yet they produce a lot of milk. But you still got to feed them if you want to have milk, if you want to have that good butter fat content that Nigerian dwarfs are known for. If you are like me trying to be competitive someday with milk testing, with production, with show, linear appraisal, all that, I am breeding for milk production first and foremost. And part of that is having a good feed regimen with your animals. So you need to feed your goats. All my does get grain on the stand. They also get a little treat when they get off the stand, which is really for their good behavior. I always say to my does, peanut for your troubles. At the end, when they get their peanut, that'd be a great sign too. Or a cool t-shirt, peanut for your troubles with a goat on it. What do you guys think? Uh, might sell merch someday. I don't know if anyone's interested. Muscovy ducks, my dear and dwarf stuff, you know? So you gotta feed your goats. So having feed and really thinking about that before you get goats, what are you gonna feed your goats? You know, what is the nutritional content of that feed going to be? It's a lot to manage the diet of ruminant animals who are also lactating. There's a lot of thought that should go into it. What's in your soil? What's in your hay? What's in your water? All of those things come into play when you're developing a nutritional plan for your dairy goats. And that's something that talking to an expert, a vet, a goat nutritionist, that's a real thing. Uh, you know, those are all things that you should take into consideration before you actually get goats or before you get a doe in milk, I should say. You, know, you don't have to think about it as much with younger animals or non-lactating animals, but if you're going to have a doe in milk, you're going to need to put feed into her and that's something that you should be prepared for. this little bucket again not using my milk machine at night 
I am not overly concerned about sanitation when it comes to my evening milking because I am not drinking this milk. Any milk right now that I'm getting in the evenings, in this little bucket here, not very much milk at all from those two does that I just milked, it's going to my kids. So I have a kid jar in the fridge and I'll just go ahead and pour it into that jar. Don't really need to strip the teat, I still do as practice, but I'm not worried about anything as far as being sanitary or, you know, following my same mindset when I go into milk handling because it's not for human consumption. But if you were hand milking and you were milking for human consumption, you just, you know, want to keep that in mind. You want to be really, really extra safe. You want to have filters ready. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed. I hope it was educational and informative to some of you who may be considering getting a dairy goat in the near future. Sunny is going to finish up her meal here and we are going to go about our evening. So thank you guys for watching. I appreciate all of you. If you're not already subscribed and you're interested in Nigerian dwarf goats, particularly in showing goats in milk testing in high production animals and breeding and all of that, make sure that you subscribe and you hit the notification bell so YouTube lets you know when I post new videos. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you like this video and a comment down below because I love to interact with all of you. It really helps me out when you guys comment and share and just like my videos. So thank you guys. Appreciate all of you. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Wendy is the slowest eater ever. So here she is being slow finishing her grain, but I'm done milking. So there's that. <laughs>